Oni is apparently cloud watching right now, so yes. Not working, but cloud watching. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone needs a little bit of a break every now and again. Hello reformers and welcome to Rimworld. This is a game that I have been meaning to play for actually a few years now and uh, well I've only just now gotten back into it and I think it's a great time because version 1.0 is coming very very soon and uh, it's about time that we get into creating our own colonists. And uh, if you would like to enter your name as a colonist or as a soldier in XCOM, for example, in the future, then there are various tier rewards on my Patreon for that. And uh, I have a couple of patron names that uh, they've come up with, and we're going to be creating our new colony here. All right, so now this series is going to be pretty relaxing, kind of a slow paced sort of thing until we start getting murdered by all kinds of pirates. Who knows? Anyway, we're going to go with the standard start here, which is the three of us waking up in crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. Your faction will be that, and we can start with three people chosen from eight. And we have a whole bunch of things that we'll be starting with here. Resources. Alright, so if you don't know anything about RimWorld, basically it's a storytelling experience. And you, you think to yourself, is that narrative? No, it's not really narrative, but you are kind of creating your own experiences with the tools that the game gives you. It's really quite amazing. Anyway, you have Cassandra Classic here. She's kind of the standard sort of default storyteller that you're going to be faced with. Then you have Phoebe Chillax, who's a little bit more relaxed, as, as her name would suggest. However, she does hit a little harder, I'd say. And uh, then we have Randy Random. He's just absolutely crazy because, well, he's got a nice smiley face on his head and he's random completely. Anyway, we're going to just go with Cassandra Classic for now. And I'm actually going to go for Base Builder here. I'm going to make it relatively simple for us right now because, in general, I'm going to be making this kind of, as I say, a bit of a relaxing series and not too... Not too, not, not, not too hectic, shall we say. Anyway, for those who want to build a colony with a taste of danger, major threats appear, but they're weakened. Some of the extremely dangerous events are disabled. Bear in mind that I've only just recently got back into it, so there are a couple of new features that I'm not really familiar with. And, uh, well, we are going to learn the game together as we go as well. I have a, a little bit of experience beforehand in terms of actually creating my own colony and we did we did reasonably well I actually ha still have that save it's still still alive so nothing to worry about there the seed starvation that's definitely something I'm not really wanting to go for so let's try a little bit oh affectionate would have probably been pretty good let's go for consortium then I guess and we're gonna just leave everything as it is we're gonna go for 50% globe coverage and we're gonna then generate all right, so we are now faced with our world here. Well, technically it's not our world, but we are crash landing on it. And you can see here that there are a wide variety of different places that are available to visit and indeed be visited by. So let's take a zoomed in look at things here. And now bear in mind, you can choose wherever you want to land. So technically I could land in the tropical rainforest, a thick, moist jungle despite its visual beauty. This is a very dangerous biome. Choking overgrowth, aggressive animals, and constant disease are why some explorers call this the green hell. Ah, uh, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> no thank you, I, I think I'd prefer to go to a temperate forest, probably. Temperate forest sounds pretty good. We do have a couple of factions nearby there are a wide variety of different factions you're going to be facing as well as of course hostile factions so let's see what's actually going on here temperate forest seems decent enough let's have a look right so the growing period is only this to this date so we can't grow things all year round which i, I think might be a bit of an issue but 
if we're able to grow things reasonably well all the time in those dates, then I think we should be okay. And we do have a couple of things nearby here. I mean, we've got limestone and marble and all kinds of mountains and everything. So I think it might be decent for us to go around here. It does have a little bit of water as well. So let's let's land around here. I think that sounds good enough to me. We do have a desert nearby, which might be a bit worrying. Because then that means maybe we'll have some issues. But anyway, let's continue. All right, so this is where the sort of, I'd say the meat of the narrative experiences begin, because what you get to do here now is create colonists. Technically, you don't create them, so to speak. You basically just have a randomize button if you want to, you know, change up what you're actually going to be getting available here. But yeah, as it stands, we have... Some, oh, incapable of caring, are you? Yes, he's incapable of caring. So they have a wide variety of different traits and skills. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, if you're watching this, maybe you've seen some other gameplay of it. But anyway, I'm going to try and explain the best I can if there's anything that I need to. And I'm not entirely sure. Mining is uh, mining social melee. That, that could be pretty useful, actually, because mining is going to be something that we're going to need if we want to try and get more steel from the nearby mountains if we actually can get there and uh, let's take a look at Kimmy then I'm going to be renaming the three settlers that we take in but for now I'm just going to call them by their regular names Ooh, okay so we have a doctor here who also is relatively good at social social is about interacting with people trading and as you can see also manipulating if you so desire and uh, otherwise intellectual that's that's pretty decent that's pretty decent that means that uh, she whenever we use her to research new technology she's gonna be a lot better at that but she is unfortunately incapable of hauling and mining maybe not the best and then we have Kevin here, who is incapable of none, which is great. Oh, he's he's good. He's good. We're probably going to be taking him because look at look at him. He's got seven social. If we want to use him for trading or anything like that, he's great at construction, growing, mining, intellectual. That's fantastic. He is, however, <laughs> uh, he's a teetotaler. Oh, never mind. Okay, so he avoids alcohol and pleasurable drugs. So that's that's pretty good actually, and he does, however, tend to crack under pressure, which means that he has a much higher mental break threshold than someone else that would maybe be a little bit more even in that respect. But we're going we're gonna to leave him the way he is. We're going to replace these two. So I'm going to take Kimmy down here, and we're going to try and get a couple of other people in here. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have Seraph here, who is incapable of artistic and mining. That's actually not too worrisome, in my opinion. He does have a little bit of hearing loss. So I'm not entirely sure what that might mean, because I haven't really had people with injuries, but you can see here that he's exceptional at shooting, and he's also pretty good at crafting as well. Hmm, I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll take him. So let's, let's go and replace Strick with... Uh, Erica here, who is a torturer, by the way, yes, incapable of caring and social. She is good at melee and shooting. She is a psychopath, as well as being a slowpoke, which means that her move speed is a little bit lower. And what? She's a psychopath, but she's kind. She's a nice person. She has a tendency to brighten everyone's day and never insults others. However, she has no empathy, and the suffering of others doesn't bother her at all. Uh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about that. Well, we're going to replace Seraph because I don't think we really need any more shooting. I think, well, we actually do need someone that's good at combat. So maybe we'll find someone that's good at combat. We don't need someone that's good with animals. Ah, this might actually be pretty good. Oh, he's incapable of dumb labor. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to take that. Okay, so apparently I've gone through everyone. So it seems like... Hmm, it seems like Erica is going to be our main fighter by the looks of things, which is going to be kind of weird. I mean, technically, as I say, we could randomize. We could randomize, but she's pretty good at shooting, she's good at melee, and she's not very good at social. 
at all. She's incapable of social, so I don't know. Maybe we just want to randomize one of our other people here and just see if we can get someone that's kind of good. So let's see what we can get. Bear in mind that I would like to get, I think, yes, I think Kevin is really good at construction, growing, and mining, so we don't really need to worry about any of those things so much. And, oh my. Now that's pretty awesome, but he is 64, that means he has a bad back. He does have a bad back, which means he's much slower, and all that sort of thing. He is also a psychopath. This is going to be kind of hilarious. If we take two psychopaths, what's that go what is that going to do? I have no idea. Yeah, we can't do that. We can't do that. Maybe I should randomize Erica a little bit, and we should just take this guy. But he does, as I say, have a bad back. He's incapable of caring. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I suppose we'll find out. Gets a rush from hurting people and never minds the sight of blood or death. He is twice as likely to start a social fight. Okay, you're getting randomized, fellow. I don't really want that. Hmm, we have a doctor there. Oh, wow, that's... Wow, okay, yeah, so he's a super soldier. That's absolutely crazy. He is incapable of social and so on and so forth. He is a nudist, so he prefers to wear no clothes. Yes, we'll just ran can continue randomizing there. Ah, okay. This guy might be someone we'll take. He seems pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. Kevin is going to be handling the research after all. Okay, I think that's what we're going to be going for here. Even though the stats of... Well, we actually have some pretty good team skills. Even though the stats of Erica are a little bit low for my liking in many aspects. So maybe we want to... Hmm. Maybe we want to do something there. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's randomize Erica a little bit and we'll see what we'll get. Alright, so I think we have our three settlers right here. We have Emil Bohr Berard. We have Aaron Deadshot Vintour, and we also have Edward Oni Cranston. Now, of course, the middle name here is their nickname, basically. And you can see here that I've randomized a little bit more just to get someone that I think would be really, really good for each of these other colonists right here. And I think uh, Oni is going to be our defense, basically, because you can see here that he's really good at shooting and melee. I mean, not, not really good, but he's decent enough to be able to absolutely murder anyone early game that is going to want to uh, maybe attack us. He does have the greedy, optimist, and fast walker traits. He's incapable of caring and artistic as well as cooking, but that's alright because I think we do have a couple of other people that are able to do that. Yeah, we do. So that's, that's decent enough. And uh, Aaron is unfortunately incapable of intellectual but that's okay, because we do have Emil for that. So, let's start. The three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. Alright, let's do this. Ooh, this is actually pretty nice. Okay, so first, what we got to do is just get out here real quick. Ah, look at that. We have a female Yorkshire Terrier. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That is really quite amazing. Okay, so anyway, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, what we're going to do first is we're just going to pause the game because we've got to do a couple of things here. We've got to select all our all our goods here and we've got to allow our colonists to be able to pick them up. So let's just allow everyone to take this sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, what we should also do is we should equip them with weapons as well. So... Let's actually see, what are they good at? Okay, so it seems like Deadshot, <laughs> uh, Deadshot is gonna have a revolver of some sort, maybe. Uh, let's have a look. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so Boar is gonna be using the knife. And I think, I think Oni will probably use the bolt action rifle and Deadshot will use the revolver. That seems like a good plan to me. All right, so they're going to go and equip those things. And now what we can do is, I think I'm actually going to utilize this room right here just as a an additional space for our forces to kind of either sleep or use as stockpile or something like that. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of wood here. 
So it would probably ma oh, what's that? That's actually a ship chunk. That might be pretty nice to deconstruct, but maybe not just yet, because I've heard some stuff about ship chunks basically having aliens pop out of it and be like, hello there, we're gonna eat your face off. So I don't really want to do that right now, thank you very much. But otherwise, I'm just making sure that nothing else is going on here. All right, so first off, let's go and try and build a little bit of a structure here. I'm gonna build three separate rooms for them to begin with because believe it or not people don't really like sleeping in the same room for too long and I kind of want to make sure that they are you know as happy as possible because that is half of the battle in this game you basically just have to make sure that everyone is happy enough so I'm gonna go for like a five by something room I guess we're not gonna make it too large or too small it's just gonna be hopefully just right for them and uh, we're gonna go for another one around here something like now that's actually not gonna work is it no that's not gonna work so let's just do let's do this and something like that I guess yeah that seems pretty good to me and then we'll put a door that door is actually not in a good place so I'm actually gonna place the door around here and I could place two doors actually so that they could go yeah maybe maybe two doors would be the way to go but bear in mind that doors are 25 wood so maybe that's not the best idea so let's let's just have them come out at the same sort of area here that's they're gonna they're gonna hate each other after a while aren't they yes they certainly are okay so let's just remove this put that there all right so then let's get another room around here and that's good there we go and we'll put the other door I guess around here because we are going to maybe be going in through here so I don't know I mean right now this is just this is just something that we want to get a little bit quickly built just making sure that it's all good and let me just get another there we go wooden floors we obviously need wooden floors and I'm gonna try and get if I can a door there I'd like a door there we go okay so that's cool uh, we can actually use this as our stockpile so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put my stockpile zone right in there and that means they'll put all their all their gear and all that sort of stuff in there might not be the best idea right now because it is pretty small it is pretty small so maybe it's gonna not be very effective but for now I think it's okay and then otherwise we're gonna put our dumping stockpile zone we're just gonna put that around here we're just gonna make that like a 9x9 nine nine or whatever it doesn't really matter right now and otherwise we are going to see if I can uh, let's let's see if we can cut uh, just let's chop some wood down shall we let's just get some wood going on there we can also cut some plants and harvest some things all right there you go so now let us continue and let our people do their stuff colonist needs treatment apparently ah yes that's what we also need to do we need to set up a hospital infirmary kind of ward and we also need to set up some sort of prison for, you know, just in case you never know just in case we we may get some interlopers wanting to do us harm and that's not something that I very much appreciate so yeah what we're gonna do is I'm gonna build these a little bit maybe a little bit further away maybe maybe I want to build the no I don't want to build the prison super far away or anything like that I think that's probably not the best idea so I guess what I'll do is just build it slightly off from the main area here so I guess I could just build it on here hmm yeah that's not that's not particularly good let's let's do let's do something like that I guess and then we'll just put the door around there and then we can make that the prison obviously we need to get some beds of course so let's get some beds actually let's get a bed and let's put that in around here and somewhere like that there we go all right and then we also need another bed over here of course for the prison or the hospital whichever one it may end up being and uh, then we'll get another over here and I think we're just gonna just gonna extend it basically I think 
That seems like a good enough plan to me. And uh, we'll place another bed in there. There we go. All right, so let's just speed that up relatively fast and have all our people do their stuff. We actually do have decent enough construction skill right now. Construction didn't, you know, actually determines how fast your colonists are in terms of placing things and, well, how successful they are, should I say. Because you can fail to construct certain things. So it's kind of nice that we have this pre-built little area here as well. And if we zoom out, you can actually see the utter enormity of the map. It's really quite crazy. We do have some water nearby, which is quite nice. Oh dear. It's raining. Well, that's not very good. Oh, apparently, apparently Deadshot is just like, yes, let me let me go to sleep immediately. That's that's maybe not the best idea, is it? Oh, well, never mind. OK, so what we what we should also do is probably get an animal sleeping spot. So we're going to place the animal sleeping spot in here. And we'll place the animal bed. Oh, you have no usable materials from which to build this. I can't place the animal bed. Oh, that's unfortunate. Don't have any don't have any cloth just yet. But hopefully soon I will be able to do that. Yeah, these guys... Ah, oh, there we go. Deadshot is now back up and running because I guess she maybe had some kind of some kind of injury perhaps that needed, needed mending. And obviously we don't have the infirmary just yet. I'm actually going to make this the medical bay. So this is the medical bay right here. And uh, where, where's the door for the prison, by the way? It seems like I've uh, completely neglected that. Yes, it seems like I was just like, yeah, let me let me just pause that real quick because we are going to need to place a door here. There we go. And this will be for prisoners. Only beds in enclosed spaces. Ah, okay. Well, it's not done yet. It's not done. But soon it will be done. No problem at all there. So we're going to have to be relatively careful here as well because you never know, sometimes pirates can come in from a, a, a location very close to you. So you need to be kind of on your toes and make sure that you keep an eye out for that sort of thing. We're going to take a look at that ship chunk relatively soon, uh, as soon as we can, that is. And uh, hopefully that's going to provide us with some much needed steel and other things. Okay, let's get some wood floors in here. There we go. Okay, that's awesome. Nice. And uh, yeah, probably what I want to do is I want to probably mine. Hmm, that's probably not the best idea. You know what? We're going to need to move this stockpile relatively soon because there's not going to be enough space for all our stuff. So maybe I'll just have to get another stockpile up and running. I mean, it would be nice if there was another area around here that could be used as a stockpile that's not too far away. I mean, obviously we have this dumping stockpile right here, but yeah, we kind of need something. A little, oh, there is actually a, hmm, that might be pretty good, but that's pretty far away. So that's probably not going to happen. All right, I guess I'll just get some additional walls constructed then. We're just going to go for like eight... And there we go, we'll just do that, and then we'll just put another door. Uh, which way should it go? Uh, probably around this way. And then we're going to just do that, and then we'll just... Uh, no, not there, thank you very much, cancel that. Yes, there we go. Alright, so then we can put another stockpile zone. Okay, that's awesome. Nice. And now we can continue to watch them work. Ah, there we go. Now it seems like Oni and Boar are taking a load off and uh, Deadshot has finally, you know, set down as well and it seems like <laughs> it seems like they have not slightly finished the walls here I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that hopefully it's going to be done pretty soon yeah yeah they, they still need to do a, a couple of things hopefully they're gonna fix their rooms first I mean I would hope so ah maybe there's actually a bit of a problem here with this limestone chunk maybe it's kind of blocking it I wouldn't think that would be the case 
Maybe it is actually. It seems like Deadshot had to remove the tree to maybe make some space. But that's alright. I think we have this perfectly fine. Yeah, so it seems like we may have a couple of issues here with this. Huh. So, let's see. I don't exactly... No, no, she can haul things. So I guess I might try to tell them to do that. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to mark these things. And we're going to try and chop down this tree as well. Hopefully that will... There we go. Now we can add the roof in. And that is, that is wonderful. Okay, let's chop down that tree as well. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to try and get a food source going. Now, hopefully they're going to chop, chop some of these plants down and everything because this is heal root, and heal root's really good for healing. <laughs> it's for, you know, medicine and things like that. So hopefully that's going to work out quite nicely. Otherwise, let's try and see. Is there any... Yeah, it seems like the fertility of the soil right here is really good. So I'm happy with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some growing zones. And uh, we need to make sure that the growing zones are in good places. So let's let's get like a... I guess like an 8x8. Eight eight. Where's the dumping ground again? Where is that? Oh, it's right here. This is not particularly good. Right, so I'm going to move the dumping ground somewhere. Let's move it down here, I guess. Let's just make it 9x9 nine nine or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And uh, let's get some more growing zones. So where's the other one? There's the other one. Okay, so another growing zone. wish I could see it, actually. It would make more sense if I could see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it starts around here. There we go. And we'll place that around here as well. And I'd like another one if at all possible, but don't know whether that's going to work. Is this actually that good? That soil right here? Yeah, that soil seems pretty good. Okay. So now it is still paused, of course, so I'm going to let them do their thing. Hopefully they're going to start planting a couple of things. Oni is apparently cloud watching right now, so yes. Not working, but cloud watching. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone needs a little bit of a break every now and again. And as you can see, we are now starting to plant a couple of things. So actually, what I need to do is assign rice, potatoes, and corn to the various zones. This is a little bit close. Yeah, th these are way too close to each other, but it's all right. I, I don't think it's going to make too much difference. And we are going to need something for clothes, hopefully. So maybe we'll get another growing zone and we'll just make it around here. There we go. And then this growing zone will be for uh, cotton, I think. Cotton is probably going to be really good for us because winter is coming. Uh -huh. Yes, winter is coming and it would probably be a good idea for us to make sure that that's all prepared because we are going to need some clothes for that. Anyway, let's see. What, what are they actually doing right now? Okay, so they... Oh, okay. So Deadshot is meditating. And Oni is cloud watching. All right. Well, you go for it. You go for it. I don't really want to tell them what to do because it's probably going to... Oh, I guess I'm just going to make this the jail up here. Because apparently Oni has claimed this bed next to the infirmary. I guess that's fine. Alright, we just got to watch out for aggressive animals as well, because you never know. Okay, so there is actually animal training in this game, so you can tame animals. I actually wonder, do any of our people have any animal skills? I actually think that, yeah, it seems like Deadshot actually has some animal skills. So technically, if she wasn't sleeping, I might be able to give her an order to, you know, tame this raccoon, for example. But at the moment, obviously that's... That's not particularly possible. Who is good at mining, by the way? Let's take a look at that. Yes, it seems like it seems like Boar is very, very good at mining. So we might need to go in here and see if we can get some steel, or maybe here. Who knows? 
we could potentially get a really nice mountain base going on. That might be pretty nice. But otherwise, they're all sleeping right now. And we don't really need to bother them. So, yes, hopefully their growing efforts will actually go pretty well. Yeah, I mean, as you can see here, it's kind of 40 to 60 days, so we kind of need to... Ah, yes, yeah, so we need, also need defenses, and we need a meal source. Yes, that's what we need. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to build an additional room, probably around here. And uh, then we should be able to place a whole bunch of other things. So I'm going to make it like a, a pretty big room, so something along these lines is pretty good and let's place the door around here and uh, let's put some floors down because you never know sometimes I forget about that and it would be nice to make sure that that's all done right okay so then otherwise what we can do is we can get some not furniture it's something else it's production I believe yeah there we go so what we can do is we can get a butcher's table we can get hand tailoring or an electric tailoring bench which uh yeah that's yeah, that's maybe not going to work right now because we don't have any power just yet we are going to get some power but not just yet and we have a fueled stove as well as a stone cutter's table and all that sort of thing so what we're going to do is we're going to place a, a butcher's table around here yeah, it's going to have a work speed penalty at the moment because it's outdoors, but it will soon be indoors, so nothing to worry about there. And otherwise, we probably need a hand tailor bench. Works at 50% of the speed of an electric tailoring bench. Can work without electricity at 40% of normal speed. I don't really mind too much. Let's just go for the hand one, I guess. And we'll use the fueled stove. Let's just turn that. We'll go for a simple research bench, which will go over around here, I guess. And a stone cutter's table. I guess that can go here. Okay, there we go. All right. So let's let them get on with that. Hopefully they're going to start building it. Yes, they are. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be going quite nicely. I mean, that's the thing. If we want to get defenses, what we can do is we can get some sandbags so that our ranged units will be able to you know, take cover behind that, and uh, they can peek out and shoot at enemies as well, which is actually pretty awesome. All right, so now there is obviously something that I need to do with this stove right here, as well as this tailor bench. So you, you have to add bills, you have to add certain orders to these furniture items. And basically what we want to make is we want to make something for the winter months. So what's good? for winter. Well, a parker. A parker is pretty good, right? And you can also view information about this as well, if you so desire. But that's basically what we want to do. So let's let's do this a certain amount of times. Let's do it... I don't know. Let's, let's do it ten times, I guess. Uh, if we can, at some point. Someone is obviously going to get on that. Whenever we have the ingredients and resources available. that's a little bit easier for us right now. I just decided to place another door there so that they can walk straight from the stockpile into the crafting area because eventually this is going to get full up and we're not really going to be able to use it. But I think considering we almost have our crafting up, we are getting our plants and everything sorted out, that this is going to be the end of the episode and uh, next time we'll hopefully be able to get our power up. We're probably going to be attacked by some pirates and hopefully we'll be able to survive. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.